Welcome, Salar here. I hope you guys are all doing well. Um, I want to first and foremost thank each and every one of you for getting me to 2K this week on this channel. Um, that's quite the achievement and I appreciate each and every one of you for being here, for your support, and for all the ways uh, you've sewn in to me, whether it's over here on this channel or um, on my other YouTube channel, Solara Speaks, or even those of you who are coming over now from TikTok. I want to welcome you. I want to say thank you. Thank you for your likes, your shares, your comments, your subscriptions. Uh, thank you for your donations and the booking, booking me for services. Um, I appreciate it all. So I thank you guys for um, allowing me to stand in my purpose. Okay, so I'm here tonight to do the tarot astrology look, a look at the tarot astrology energies of the eclipse. And for those of you who are not familiar with tarot astrology, I am not a formally or classically trained astrologer, and I therefore learned astrology through the tarot. And so um, while I do use some, you know, I, like astrological lingo, um, I, I'm, that's not my area of expertise. So I read energies even th uh, through the lens of astrology with tarot, with numerology, as well as with any channeled guidance I receive. So I am a little bit late. The eclipse has officially occurred less than an hour ago. I have been under the weather this week and um, my son is a little bit under the weather too. So I'm not going to keep, I'm going to keep this reading as succinct as I can so we can go and hang out tonight and just chill. But I did, you know, I debated whether to come on or not. But for me, my Virgo was Virgoing. It was just like, nope, come, come on and do it. Come on and do it. Because if you don't, you're going to regret it. Because I know me. I know me. Okay, so um, quick announcement for those of you who are interested in personal tarot astrology reads for the next eclipse, the next full moon, which is two weeks from tonight at time of recording. As I say that, it's 1944 in the clock. The next uh, uh, lunation is the full moon in Taurus, and it's going to be an eclipse, and uh, that's occurring two weeks from tonight. So if you are interested in a reading uh, concerning how uh, the energies of that moon are going to be affecting your personal astrology as I read through tarot astrology, um, then I need you to please get your orders fulfilled by next Friday the 20th by 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you come to me after 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Friday the 20th of October, I will not be able to take you on. Um, I will at a certain point have to cap it off at the amount of people I take on. I'm, I'm very I'm careful with my energy because tarot astrology, like when you're delving into people's personal energy like that, it can be quite tiring. So with that said, um, I will let you know whether or not I'll be able to do a reading for you. So um, you can find all information for that, including pricing and the format options on my website. It will be under readings and then it will be under full, full and new moon personal readings. Okay. Um, I have introduced because I've had a few people come and ask me. So, you know, I heard you guys and I'm going to do it. I've introduced the option with the personal tarot astrology for full and new moons. I've introduced the option of doing it live with me now too. So I will only be doing bookings for um, the next full moon. I will be taking appointments for that. If you want to book live with me on um, Monday the 23rd, I believe, 23rd. Yeah, Monday the 23rd, Tuesday the 24th, and Wednesday the 25th. So I will not be um, meeting with people for those readings past Wednesday the 25th. So please organize your time accordingly. And if you're interested, please drop me an email. That's how you contact me to book me for services. It's either at my email dailyalchemy at gmail.com, and that's alchemy with a K, or Solara at solara.info, or you can go directly through my website through the contact section, and then we can begin to initiate a conversation about what it is you're interested in. But please do your own due diligence before you come to me, um, meaning please know what it is you would like to book. For those of you who are also interested, I've introduced divine alignment readings 
All of that is on my um, website. And quick reminder that for the month of October, it's 10% off all listed prices. As a thank you to my subscribers and supporters over at Solara Speaks that got me to 10K. So let's get into this, okay? Let me pull up the right chart. So we just experienced the new moon in Libra, and we experienced, uh, I don't remember, is it a partial eclipse or is it a full? I know it was an annular eclipse. I think it was, let's not think, let's, let's be sure. Why is all, oh, why do we have this? Uh, bear with me one second, guys. It was a solar eclipse, an annular solar eclipse, and the next one is a partial lunar eclipse. So we just had um, an annular solar eclipse. And I believe, like, I always remember the annular solar eclipses as kind of being a sun donut. And that's because the moon is supposed to be, um, you know, facing the sun and it doesn't obscure the fullness of the sun. So there's like a ring of fire. Um, I believe that's what an, an annular eclipse is. And so the way my guides, when I was first learning about these eclipses, the way my guides kind of was explaining it to me is it's like when an annular eclipse occurs, it is an opportunity for um, certain parts of the things that have been, we're ready to let go of through the moon. It's, it's time for the sun to consume those things. And so think about what the sun does when it might consume an energy. Um, well, it could, you know, burn it away, but the sun is also a great exposing factor. So it's very interesting because I've been, you know, meditating on these energies for the past couple of days. I've been doing personal tarot astrology readings and, you know, looking at the collective energies as well as a client's individual energies. I've been musing on these energies for, for you know, a little while now and, um, trying to find um, more answers. It just felt like there was more, more that wanted to, to come forth. And um, it, it started to come forth a little bit more today. So what my guides were showing me is that we, this eclipse, this uh, solar annular eclipse, new moon in Libra, is opening a death portal. And uh, that's what they call it. It's a death portal, but it's not like... Um, it's not like uh, what you what you think. It's um it's not like mal malicious. Um, what it is is it's opening a portal for things that need to die um, for a time. That especially what they were showing me very stubborn energies that need the, the the underpinning of eclipse energy in order to push them out and to like die and be transformed. This is what this eclipse window is opening into because this is the last moon, you know, um, we have in Libra. We've, we've already gone, we've already had the full moon in Aries. This is the new moon in Libra. So the next full moon we have is going to be in Taurus. So by the time the moon reaches its fullness in two weeks, we would have entered, the sun would have entered Scorpio. And so then we have another eclipse. And as I was explaining, um, I don't know if it was in the last video or not. I explained it at some point, but um, whenever energies die, there's always an overlap of an energy waning out while a new one is coming forth and becoming more established. So in other words, what I'm referring to when I'm speaking of this is that um, the nodes, although they switched back in cancer season, um, the node switched out of to the Taurus and Scorpio axis into the Aries and Libra ac axis. We've still been waning out the energy of the previous nodal positions and welcoming these new ones. Okay, welcoming the 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 um, the the North Node in Aries and the South Node in Libra. Okay, and so these eclipses are actually establishing those crossover energies. In other words, the new moon in Libra, the eclipse energy is heralding the, the, you know, the establishment of the Aries Libra axis being in the nodal positions while 
this uh, partial lunar eclipse that will be occurring with the full moon in Taurus in two weeks will now be pushing out the final like remnants of what the uh, what the nodes in Taurus and Scorpio were meant to do, and that doesn't mean that um, that energy is over and done with. It will continue to have a residual effect, but now. What is established in terms of, you know, the nodes is now the Aries Libra energy has fully arrived. Okay, so in some ways, this quote-unquote death portal that is opening is assisting some of the clearing of the energies that must leave because they are connected to the, the previous nodals, uh, the previous um uh, Taurus Scorpio Scorpio nodal position. Okay, so um, that's partly what it is. So you can look at it from an astrological point. And that's one way it's working, but the way it's working for us is because this uh, portal is opening into Scorpio season, and we know that Scorpio um, in the tarot it is the death card. Scorpio actually has three cards. I joke I joke with my Scorpios because I'm like, you guys are the only sign that is so intense that you actually need. You need three different emblems, the scorpion, the eagle, and the phoenix. And you, <laughs> excuse me, and you need three different tarot cards. Death, the tower, and judgment. And that is actually just indicative, not just of the intensity of Scorpionic energy, but what it's here to do. It's here to bring death. It's here to bring rebirth, right? And so there's a portal that's opening through this eclipse season that is designed to clear out more proficiently what must die. And what must die, when I say what must die, it's those energies that have been clinging stubbornly and it's like the only way to get them to get gone is to open a portal. That's what it feels like and that's what they've been showing me and even with the, the next moon, the full moon in Taurus coming up in two weeks, it feels like there's an end to, hmm, I want to be careful when I say this, there's an end to an era of hacking and dominating our energy fields. So if you've been hanging with me for a while, then you'll know that as far as I'm concerned, your Taurus energy and your second house is your house of, or the sign over your divine resources. And what are your divine resources? Your divine resources are the entirety of your energy field, or what some would call your Taurus field, spelt differently, T-O-R-U-S, or others would call your energy biofield. And it's within your energy field, your biofield, your Taurus field, that you have all of the resources as a multidimensional being that you were sent here with in order to thrive, not survive. The matrix turned all of those things off by hacking into your energy, stealing from you, and then programming you to create a reality that is way below your worth and what you came here to do. That's what the matrix system was about. But that matrix is dying and a new one is being born. And in that, you're free. In that, your energy is yours. In that, you become sovereign. This is what we're doing. We are clearing out all of those little gods that we allowed to rule over us before we knew who we were, before we remembered who we were, before we took back the place of our own Aries energy, our crown, before we sat back on our throne, before we started to live truthfully through the throat, before we accessed our blueprint. And so it feels very much like Part of why this window is opening through this first eclipse is to assist with the clearing out of really fucking stubborn energies that haven't wanted to let go. They haven't wanted to let go of the control that they've wielded over your energy field for all this time. Yes, and for some of you, that's going to be obvious. It's going to be those karmic individuals who 
you know, even after you leave them, they might still be doing things to try to control your energy, including casting spells and all that other shit. But on a grander level, on a collective and a global level, this is marking the, the end of an era where humanity has been constantly and consistently biohacked and we had no idea because we had no idea of our multidimensional truth. And this ascension is helping us to take all of that back, including taking the earth back for ourselves. Um, this earth is uh, our responsibility and these beings have had us living below our value, acting out of character um, because not only were our fields biohacked, but then we were also programmed into lower states in order to keep this matrix alive. So it feels like this, um, this new moon eclipse is opening a death portal where the energies that have refused to let go must go to die. Okay, so let's get into what's actually in the chart. So when um, the, the, the moon reached its newness, and I think um, it reached its newness and then the eclipse occurred, I believe. Um, I think the eclipse occurred, um, the new moon itself happened like six minutes before the actual eclipse. But either way, it happened at 21 degrees Libra, the sun at 21 degrees Libra, and the moon at 21 degrees Libra. And so that is uh, represented in the tarot, this Libra mark, by the, the major arcana cards of the Empress, as well as the Justice. And then that 21 degree mark is the doorway into the Four of Swords. This is Four of Swords energy. So right off the bat, with that Four of Swords, we know something new is being established in our day-to-day -day living, okay? And what is being established? Peace. Um, foundations, new foundations that we are being um, taught how to set in accordance with establishing peace in our own energy fields and peace in our own realities. And really, because you're dealing with swords energy and Libra energy, and it's the air, it has to do with peace in the mind, peace um, within your own mental body. Okay, and how is that being established? Well, um, for one thing, we do have, like I said, this relinquishing of beings who once had control over your mental reality. They had control over your thoughts. You were programmed through your mind first. You were programmed to think certain ways about yourself and others. And it was from the mental programming that you then began to act in ways that confirm that. Therefore, establishing the mental cues that you were programmed into, right? So, and then on the other hand, you've also been programmed through frequency. You've been programmed through food. You've been programmed through the waters. You've been programmed a, a variety of ways. But the main way that they've assaulted us is through the mind. And so there's something that's occurring through this new moon eclipse where we get to get back our peace of mind. And how is this happening? Why is this happening? Well, that is speaking to us through the Empress and the Justice. So the Justice speaks of balance returning, equilibrium returning. Um, but the Empress speaks of the equilibrium that returns by way of divine feminine wisdom. It speaks of the equilibrium that returns due to our ability to be at peace with the cycles of the earth. So this eclipse on a personal level has been really important for us to tune in to our own personal cycles. Because you see, we were all programmed into schedules and, you know, regimens and traditions that a lot of the time go against our own nature and against our own personal needs and that whenever you go against yourself and what you need it is an act of self-betrayal but it's also an act of giving away your power to something that's telling you to do something that ultimately is going to hurt you it might not hurt you today but it will in the long term 
So this eclipse has been all about identifying those energies that have been robbing our peace of mind, those energies that have kept us in a constant state of warring against self. So this um, eclipse is about bringing equilibrium back to our fields, first through the way that we think and we process, um, we, we mentally process our realities. And it's all about re-establishing beauty in our lives because the Empress Libra energy um, is ruled by Venus. And the Venusian energy, as I've often told you guys, um, is very interested in your pleasure. Venus feels you have a right to pleasure because divinely you do. You didn't actually come here to suffer. And this is what we're breaking out of. And I, I, I have to say this every time I mention this word pleasure. Pleasure divinely will never harm yourself or another being. What the matrix has called pleasure has often been steeped in addiction, abuse, and self-harm. And therefore, you know, the extension of harming other beings. That's not true pleasure. Venus wants to reconnect you to divine pleasure, to living beautifully every day because you are in sync with your own personal cycles and you therefore are in sync with um, the cycles of the earth. You are an extension of the earth and the earth is a reflection of you. And when you live in ways that where you forget that or you don't know that, then you bring um, destruction upon self, including disease and untimely death. And so there's something about this new moon, excuse my voice, like I said, I've been a little bit under the weather. There's something about this uh, new moon in Libra that wants to come and like I was telling you, um, that sun donut where the, the moon is in the center and the sun is almost like consuming those lunar energies. Like the sun wants to expose what needs to be exposed, but also consume and exhume what must go. You know, what has kept us constantly, again, at war with self and therefore making decisions from that place um, that take us deeper into being controlled by external energies. Because when we are at war with self, it's because we've been separated from different aspects of self. And when you're separated from different, by different, um, from different aspects of who you are, that oftentimes is enacted by an external energy, but it also means that the more fragmented you are, the more you give away um, the you know, power over you to other beings and other external forces. And that's why the matrix had such a vested interest in keeping you fragmented so you could be controlled. And there's something about, excuse me a second, let me grab my water. There's something about, I don't like those uh, sports caps. There's something about um, this new moon in Libra that is here to shift all of that. And the fact that it's at the 21 degree mark is further evidence of this. So the 21 degree mark in tarot is um, connected to the world card. It's Saturnian energy. So. Today on the day of Saturn, we have this new moon eclipse and it's expressing itself at the degree in the tarot that represents Saturn also. So when you get to the world card, that speaks of the end of an era. It's the end of an era, okay? Um, there is something magnanimous that this eclipse is closing out and this is why I say that there is this death portal that has opened to clear out some of these really stubborn energies from the old era that have been trying to prevent you from walking into the new one. 
Okay, so this is about, this already has been for many of you, like you, you already felt it because the eclipse energies, you started to feel it around, you know, as soon as the equinox came around and then that full moon in Aries with all the purging, the purging energy is the shedding and the dying that must occur of the energies that have kept you out of, the high, of a higher way of being, existing, experiencing. And so this death portal is opening up to to take these things away, kind of like the, the moon is in the center of the sun and the sun is consuming and exhuming certain things. So the 21 degree mark astrologically is a degree of Sagittarius. And this is where it gets really interesting because Sagittarius is the sign in the zodiac that when you break it down in Gematria, its numerical value is 144. It's the only sign in the zodiac that you can do that with, which tells us that there's a significance with the Sagittarian energy when it comes to connecting us to the 144 frequency. And so when you start to look at the planetary influence of uh, Sagittarius, which is Jupiter, and Jupiter is all about um, taking the energies that Mercury have allowed for you to connect with by way of expanding your own mental consciousness so you can begin to see past the illusions and the fuckery. The mercurial energy allows your consciousness to expand enough to do that. And then Jupiter comes and helps you to walk that out. Before you materially see anything, you, but you, you know, now at this point when Jupiter comes around through Sagittarius, you are following the light of your soul. You know, and the Jupiter and Sagittarian energy helps you to do that. It helps you to do it with boldness. It helps you to, um, you know, come into a state of agreement within yourself about doing that. Um, yeah. And so the, uh, the Jupiter energy or the Sagittarian, I should say, the Sagittarian energy, I say the Sagittarians, um, Sagittarius energy helps us to live in truth. Other signs help us to access truth. Sagittarius energy helps us to begin to take those first steps in walking in truth. And this is why it's so, um, you know, it's such an expansive energy and it's the energy because it's connected to Jupiter. It's what connects us to faith. Okay, so with this, we have the Saturnian energy at work with the, the Jup Jupiter energy of Sagittarius through the degree. And Jupiter is coming, has been coming in very strongly for me um, this week, even when I did the week ahead energies. Um, they say that Saturn is the father of Jupiter, meaning that Jupiter is also on another level opens you up to being able to um, have wealth or have access to your divine resources and to materialize them. <coughs> Excuse me. And, um, and, but Saturn gets you in line and gets you in ready, gets you ready for that. So a lot of people have issues with Saturn energy. They think that Saturn is like a hard taskmaster, but Saturn isn't. Saturn is a diligent dad. That's what the Saturn or a diligent mom, because it's funny, but I, I really like when I connect with the planet Saturn, I know that historically speaking, it's been a man, it's been father energy, but I get crone energy when I connect with Saturn. I get older, wise woman energy whenever I connect with Saturn. So I think of Saturn as being like grandma energy more than father, but Let's go with, with what, what people have known, and that is that, you know, um, Saturn is a disciplinarian, and it's not a disciplinarian because it wants to take your fun. The very word discipline comes from the word disciple. It is to teach. It's to teach you to walk in righteousness. And when I say in righteousness, I mean in right standing with your divine truth so that you are in your power. So Saturnian energy comes around to put you in divine order so you can have access to the gifts of Jupiter. And so if you are 
you know, if you are extremely out of order, when Saturn comes, it is going to feel more chaotic. It is going to feel more like a spanking. But that doesn't mean that Saturn is like a dick. It just means that Saturn has uh, this desire to get you into order so you can be rewarded. Saturnian energy only comes to spank when we are either so far out of order that we completely lost ourselves in the plot or when we were, are actively resisting. I had such a um, like light bulb moment like a week ago because I was, uh, I was looking at my, my, my charts with my children and I realized, because my kids are only 22 months apart, I realized that I had both of my kids during my Saturn return. And at the time, I knew nothing about a Saturn return. I was a born-again Christian. You know, when I first began to ascend, I freaked out and I looked for the first experience that felt spiritual and found it in the evangelical church and I went with it for a while. So when my Saturn return came around, I didn't even know what the fuck a Saturn return was. But when I was going back in it, it was one of the most difficult times of my life because I'd had to make some really important like decisions. I had to walk away from family. I had my ex, um, my, my husband, the father of my children, he'd walked out on me when our daughter was one year old and uh, I, I'd just become pregnant with our son. You get what I'm saying? And so um, I, I, I was, a, and, you know, I, I was a, an abandoned mother about to be a mother twice over. It was one of the most like traumatizing experiences that no one should have to go through. And then on top of it, I had, not only did I not have support from family, I had severe opposition at every turn. So I walked away from, from everything. And so because of that, that was a really like difficult stage in my life. And yet in the midst of it, I got rewarded. I got rewarded with two beautiful beings that are my, like my guides in the flesh. My children are like my guides in the flesh, and that's what children, oftentimes, if we're able to tap into their value, they are our guides, and we are their guides too in different ways. But my point is, at the time, I was out of divine order. I was. I was following doctrines that were preaching to me about how it is I should be, and I was not following the light of my soul, and yet... There were parts of me that I was hungry and I was looking and I was searching and that's why I'd made the decision. And in that place, even though I was out of divine order, I was still rewarded with two amazing souls. And this is why I love the Saturnian energy because it's not as, um, it's not as simple and cutthroat as people like to make it out to be. Saturn's not looking to, to hurt you. Saturn is looking for reasons to reward you, but it can't reward you if you're out of alignment. So Saturn comes to put you in order and put you in alignment. So this is what this new moon in Libra is about with this expression of Saturn through the degree, as well as that Jupiter energy of Sagittarius in the astrological energy of the degree. We are being put in alignment in order to receive. And that's for everyone, okay? And you will receive in accordance with where you are on your own individual path. And then others will receive in accordance with how much they've tried to be blocks in other people's divine paths. And if they're being a block in other people's divine paths, they certainly are being a block in their own too. You know, so this is the energy. There's, there is an undertone of judgment, and that is in the Libra energy too. The Libra energy, there's an undertone of judgment always also. So I just want to think if there's anything else. Um, so this new moon is, uh, the way it is, Helping us to come to an end of being at war with self is by bringing us into union with self. So Libra and energy is about the marriage of heart and mind. It's about the marriage of heart and mind. And it's only when heart and mind can be married in peace. Married, I'm sorry, that peace can come. And that's the Four of Swords. The Four of Swords is the peace 
and the recovery that comes after war. And it's the war that comes through the Three of Swords, which is very interesting. I always used to wonder, you know, Libra is an air sign. Um, so why out of all of the suits is this expression of heartbreak shown through the swords energy and their and through the Libra sign, the Libran sign specifically. And I began to to realize it's because in Libra season is where heart and mind come together, depending on what it is that you've accrued through, you know, um, the first quarter of the zodiac where it was all about establishing higher levels of your Christed mind. And then the second quarter of the zodiac wheel is about recalibrating your emotions in order to access your Christed heart. And Libran energy is about the marriage of the two in order to birth peace. And it feels like, and every year we're given this opportunity and every month we're given this opportunity through the cycling of the moon through these energies too. Um, but when it happens with the sun, it's a grander, um, a grander, um, like a grander upgrade or a grander opportunity to upgrade. And um, with this eclipse, this energy is being magnified and it is therefore eclipse energy is here to eclipse out, to, to eclipse energy is here to put you on your north node. So the eclipse energy is very Saturnian in nature in general, okay? Because it's here to get you into alignment with your node, your north node. That's what the eclipse energy is here to do. And so um, this is about clearing out those things that have been taking away your peace, those thieves of your joy, those stealers of your peace, they must go within primarily because when it goes from within, your external reality must match it too. Okay, so we have Mercury speaking also. Mercury, if you, you haven't vibed with me before, if this is your first time, then Mercury is the planet that I like to say is how we connect to spirit. It is um, our divine instructions. It is how we connect divinely to those invisible helpers that are here to guide us. Um, those um, interdimensional helpers that are here to guide us. We access them by way of the planet Mercury, which is why Mercury is the planet that aids in expanding our mental consciousness so we can get out of the limited thinking that the matrix wants to program us into and begin to explore outside the bounds that we've been told we should stay. Because when you start to expand your mind outside of the prescribed boundaries, that the matrix tries to keep you locked in, then you're called all kinds of things. You are a conspiracy theorist, for one. You know, so many names I'll give you. And, and that's to, to, to scare you back into, into, the, into the tiny mental box they want to keep you in, because in that tiny mental box, you can easily be programmed and easily controlled. And Mercury says, fuck a bunch of that. I've come to set your mind free. Okay? So Mercury will set your mind free by guiding you but it guides you invisibly. And it not only guides you, it doesn't only expand your consciousness, but then it helps you to make sense of it through Virgo. It helps you to, to, to tune into discernment is really what it does. So Mercury is expressing itself um, through the 17 degree mark of Libra. So the 17 degree mark of Libra, this is the three of swords energy. And so we have Mercury as the magician, in the tarot and then we have the empress and justice again and the three of swords but we also have the 17 degree mark is a, um, an astrological degree of Leo it's an astrological degree of Leo but in the tarot it's connected to the star which makes it an, Aqu an Aquarian tarot degree okay um, or an, an Aquarian number 17 is a 
one of the Aquarian numbers, there's a few of them, 11, 17, and 23 are all numbers of Aquarius. Um, for different reasons, I won't get into that right now, but uh, Aquarius and Leo energy are, of course, um, they are sister signs, but they are also the signs that connect us to the Golden Age. So the previous Golden Age was the Age of Leo. And this new Golden Age that we are stepping into and we are building is the Age of Aquarius. So Mercury is talking to us about um, bridging the gap between the previous Golden Age and the new one. And I've been talking about, um, especially like if you caught my week ahead reading last week, this is a time period where we are being activated in our golden age codes, especially the codes that were coming through um, at the start of the galactic new year, which was the beginning of Leo season when the 8-8 portal opened. Those codes are wanting to be activated. Those codes are wanting to activate dormant golden solar codes or golden age codes that we already hold within our fields. And so Mercury is kind of walking us through that, walking us through. Mercury is also speaking about how the, the fact that it's time. It's time. Um, the stars are aligned. So the 17 card in the tarot, it is the star. So Mercury is telling us the stars are aligned now for this new golden age. The stars are aligned now for those of you who are keepers of the wisdom from the previous golden age to step forth and to begin to share, the stars are aligned, it's time. The old world is dead, it's time. And even though it might not seem like the old world is fully dead, it is. Because remember that it's like you live on a time, um, a time lapse. Meaning that what has already been established in the heavens is going to come forth. So the end of the old world is already established, it's done. But because we live in a material world, it takes a moment for everything to begin to shift. But Mercury is assuring us that it's already done. The stars are already aligned for this new golden age to, to dawn, to be born. And it's dawning through you, it's dawning through me, it's dawning through us. Um... Yeah, I'm really getting more than anything the golden age energies. And so this is a call also for those of you who are here to step into your roles as, as you know, leaders or as humanitarians. That's the Aquarian energy also. This new age, if you want to be abundant, and again, it will fully be a frequency thing. There's no more living selfishly and greedily and off the pain of other beings. Um, I often will tell people that there's so many people in the spiritual game who think that um, their way to divinity is through bypassing certain energies or stages, but the fact of the matter, and this is what the Age of Aquarius is here to show us, you cannot enter into your divine truth until you first come to peace with your human one. You cannot um, enter into divine places if you first are not in touch with, uh, you know, being humane to yourself and to others. The window into divinity is through humanitarianism and not the fake um, philanthropy and charities of the matrix. That's all appearance. The, the previous age in the Matrix was all about appearing a certain way. And it was possible to do that because we lived in illusions. Everything was an illusion, including um, the facade that people uh, were expressing before themselves in the world, before others in the world. So all of these beings that were pretending to be so phil philanthropic in all of this, they're not healed. They weren't doing it from a place of truly, uh, you know, loving humankind because they don't even love themselves so how is it possible it was all an act for for many reasons it, it's an ego thing it's to get others to see them as being good but it's also so that they can continue to hold on 
to this false notion that if they do certain things, they're good. And that's not what it's about. Um, and that's a whole other story. But um, those of you who have done the healing and you've truly connected, because many of you have been sent, especially those of you who, you know, carry the wisdom of the previous golden age, you've been sent to, um, you've been sent to, to show people how to love. You've been sent to, to bring some of these principles back to life. Um, and this is what Mercury is, is talking you through, talking us through right now, is how to do that. But Mercury is also letting us know the stars have been aligned. And this is especially for those of you who've done the, the difficult inner child healing, because this is also Leo energy. So it speaks about the recovery of the inner child. Really what it is, is, is the recovery of ownership of your own solar plexus your own personal will and drive, your own personal sun, the recuperation of your light and your shadow, the recuperation of everything you lost through the perpetual trauma cycles of the matrix. Mercury says the stars are aligned if you've done that to begin to step out and to share. Yeah. So we got Venus. It just entered into Virgo a few days ago. It's at five degrees at the time of the new moon. So another degree of Leo. Another degree of Leo um, expressing itself through the Virgo energy. So Venus is the empress in the tarot. Virgo is the hermit and the magician to a, a smaller extent, but mainly the hermit. And um, the five degree mark of Virgo energy is the eight of pentacles. And then the five degree mark is a Leo energy. And in the tarot, it's connected to the Hierophant. So it's connected to Taurus energy. But expressing itself as the Hierophant, it's very much connected to institutions and systems. Um, and what it is that our masculine and feminine energy begin to create when they're a unified force. So everything is created from the basis of, of, of dual energies, including these principles of masculine and feminine energy. And so even in, um, in the old world, it was still masculine and feminine energy working together, but they were working in dysfunctional ways distorted ways. And so um, what's being birthed is the, uh, the divine aspects of these energies that must come together now to form new systems, new institutions, new ways of being based upon integrity, really, is what it comes down to. So Venus in Virgo is showing us how to get our minds in alignment now with this idea that peace is our birthright, that we are entitled divinely to living lives that are beautiful. Venus is helping us to come to terms with that in our minds, yeah, through the Virgo energy, liberating us from the programs that had us feeling like we had to constantly prove ourselves or work hard to be worthy of that which the divine already said was ours. Venus is helping to undo all of that, undo the childhood cues, the childhood programming, because it runs deep. There's so many of us that have woken up to this idea that we deserve better, but then we have to undo all of the energies and the roots and the programs and the conditioning that our whole lives have told us the complete opposite and had us programmed therefore into lack. And Venus is helping us connect to the truth of our being deserving of pleasure, but it's helping us to do it through the Virgo energy by being comfortable. The Virgo energy is also about you know, setting daily routines, investing in self, 
investing in our own personal cycles as opposed to what the world and others tell us is acceptable or right. No one can tell you what's right for you, but you. So Venus is helping you to trust that part of yourself again in your own knowing and to walk in the light of that truth, no matter what anyone else says or what anyone else is doing. The social agendas, because they were agendas of the matrix, were designed to get us all living out of sync with self and feeling guilty anytime we try to come back into sync with self because it's not what the dominant group were doing. It was a form of bullying. We're done with that shit. Fuck a bunch of what everyone else is doing at this point. If people are still living in that group mentality, that's on them, but that's not your path. And Venus is here to help you undo in your mind all that was uh, instituted and established in your mind um, based upon those social agendas which are very much connected to the Hierophant card of systems and institutions. We have been systemically and institutionally programmed out of our power and it began with the first institution that we were indoctrinated into and that's family. Okay, Mars moved into Scorpio, and I love, I love Mars and Scorpio energy because Mars loves being in Scorpio. Mars is um, excuse me a second. <coughs> I'm gonna also have some water because I'm getting a little bit congested again. I said it was gonna be short, but when I get into these energies, yeah. I'm about to wrap up soon. Mars is a spiritual warrior of the, the um, planets. Mars um, is here to help us to fight for what is right in its evolved energy. So Mars is here to help us to fight for what is right and to tear down, for e turn, tear down everything that gets in the way of that. Mars is fiery. Mars don't take no shit. Mars comes in and destroys and asks questions later. Okay, um, and we need that energy. So Mars um, expressing itself through Aries is very, that's the impulsive way that Mars expresses itself where it just comes and destroys. But through the energy of Scorpio, it begins to teach us how to war. It begins to teach us the intricacies of going deep and almost like... Um, it teaches us the art of war. Um, I was watching something, I forget what I was watching earlier, I forget completely, but it was something where, um, it was like I think a movie clip or something where they were talking about fighting and the thing about, uh, you know, people who partake in things like martial arts and martial arts, it is, you know, Mars energy, is uh, where we get the word martial arts from. Um, martial arts, like those kinds of um, tactical sports, are less about, you know, uh, the strength and, and, and knocking a person out, and it's more about getting into a person's mind and knocking them about emotionally in order to then be able to secure being a winner. It's really out, while the boxing might be important, the kicking, whatever martial art, let's say boxing, okay? In boxing, the boxing is really important, but you know, Muhammad Ali was, uh, was the king of this. He knew how to get into his opponent's head and psych them out. And he did that through his words. He did that through what some would say was arrogance. He knew how to trash talk to a point where he would make his opponents begin to doubt themselves and to get in their own feelings also because he was really great at insulting people. And he did it so beautifully because he did it in rhyme. Like, I, I love me some Ali. But anyway, um, the, the secret to warfare is not the artillery and it's not the moves, it's knowing your opponent's mind. And there's something about this Mars entering Scorpio that is taking us not only to higher levels of warfare, 
which feels more protective than anything else because it also feels like there's an end to this warfare where these energies have been fighting us covertly before we were even awake and aware that we were in any kind of fucking war to begin with. There's something about this Mars entering Scorpio and this death portal that's opening through this new moon eclipse to suck out this uh, clingy shit that uh, this all of this stuff that's been clinging to our fields. It's like uh, the Mars and Scorpio, the, the way that these energies go, I often will, will tell you guys, the way these energies go is through their exposure. That's why shadow work is so important because these energies hide in your unclaimed, ignored, denied, untapped shadow. That's where these energies like to hide out and hurt you and then use you to hurt other beings or use other beings to hurt you. It's in those places of your shadow that you don't want to look at or they don't want to look at, don't want to claim and want to deny and repress and suppress. That's where these energies hide. So there's something about this Mars expressing itself through one degree Scorpio where it's like time for the nitty gritty of exposing all of those tiny places where these energies still want to try and hide and take you out of your power. And Mars is here like, no, do you see that? Do you see that? Do you know how to tactically outdo the enemy that's been living within your fields all this time? And you weren't even know it, it was these are the especially invisible ones and the especially invisible ones are oftentimes the ones who've been puppeteering the most and um you know like even when you look at the world stage the ones who actually run this who've been running this sham are the ones who you you wouldn't be able to, to name them you've never seen them in your life because they're not the ones who are on the camera they're the ones who are puppeteering the ones on camera. The invisible, 1% they call them, right? One degree Scorpio and Mars. There's something here about um, the exposure of that energy, the, the, the hidden ones that have been like the root energies that have been puppeteering the other energies that you've been, you know, um, putting out of your fields. And in doing that, there will be also an exposure of those ones that have been trying to live as shadows, running everything. This is the beginning of the exposure of some of that too. You see, as we do the work internally, as we give these energies nowhere to hide internally, they have nowhere to hide on the grand stage. The matrix, your energy field has been used this entire time to create this shit. That's how powerful you are. That's why they had to program you. That's why they had to keep you in lower states. Because for as long as you were stuck in fear, you your energy field was being used to create this. They hacked your fields to create this shit. You know? So when you when you go into your fields and you clear them out so succinctly that there's nowhere left for any of these energies to hide at all, then the same thing that you're doing within is the same thing that's going to happen externally. That's how energy works. And it already is happening. I found it so funny. I don't really watch the news or any of these this fear-mongering stuff, but um, for some reason, different things that were occurring in the news kept coming up. And I noticed something very interesting because I'm very aware how they use the shadow aspects of planets um, and planetary alignments, and they exploit them to harm us. And so on Tuesday, here in the UK, everywhere you looked on the day of Mars, on the day of the 1010 portal, right? Everywhere you looked, there were these stories on bedbugs. Every other TikTok I'm going on, bedbugs raid London. You see them all on the, on the tube and everything. And come Wednesday, I didn't see one more. Not, not even one more. I haven't seen one since Tuesday. And even when it was happening, I was like, oh, I see what these, these fuckers are doing. They're trying to utilize the power of this portal and the power of Mars to try to create havoc. And yet it didn't work. I went on the tube. It was Thursday. I didn't see one bed bug. Not one. I took my precautions. I know how to deal with these things. I, I, I lived in Manhattan. 
You get what I'm saying? Like, I know how to deal with these things. It's not the first time um, I would have, you know, come across, you know, a bed bug infestation in the city. But not a bed bug in sight. And, and nothing that you're seeing on the, on the, on the, on the, your, your phone, nothing. People were chilling. It was rush hour. Didn't nobody look as if they were looking around for bugs. Nothing, nothing. I repeat, nothing. Just a bunch of hysteria and frenzy and trying to use the power of Mars to create chaos and make people, um, so connected to fear that they begin to create from that place on a portal day. Ridiculous. Anyway, so Mars is the tower. Scorpio is, like I said, death, the tower, judgment, the one degree mark is the five of cups. Okay. Um, and then one is Aries energy. So expressing itself through Aries also. And, um, it's the magician. It's the magician. So this is where we begin to get crowned in our ability to really be warriors. And not because we are about to go into war and have to fight again and all of that. No, it's just um, in the clearing out of these energies that wanted to cling. There's more exposure that's coming, but you won't really be able to get a hold of it and see it and discern it, because that's what the Mars and Scorpio energy is wanting to show. If you don't know all of your emotional traps, that's what it is also. You don't know yourself inside and out emotionally. If you're not completely honest with yourself, as the Virgo and the Libra energy has been calling us into, then you won't be able to see all of the ways all of your emotional traps, because your emotional traps are, you know, where your shadow needs to be reclaimed. And if you don't know them and if you ignore them, then you are ignoring those parts of your shadow where these energies are still lurking. So I think I'm going to end there because uh, the other planets are, they haven't moved really since last week. Oh, wait, wait. We did have Saturn move from the one degree to the zero degree. So we're at the zero degree Pisces and Saturn. I spoke about it in the week ahead energies. We're at the zero degree Pisces, which means we have a portal out. We have a portal out for as long as we are Saturnian energy in alignment. The eight of cups is that energy. It's the portal out. There's a portal open for us to, to, to skedaddle out. Okay, so, yep, that's what I'm getting. Yeah, I think that's it. I hope that this reading was helpful and insightful. Again, I'm sorry that it was late, but it's still, it's still relevant, right? So, um, I'm sending you guys so much love, joy, peace, patience, focus, clarity, every beautiful thing under the sun that is divinely yours and is ultimately um, there for you to take for as long as you know that because you're walking in your divine, <coughs> woo, your divine truth. I'm gonna take my ass to bed now. I'll see you guys again soon. Take care.